Hey everybody, before the show starts, log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to book a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions solved. Enjoy the show. This video is intended for educational purposes only and only reflects deal points disclosed by Lisa Left Eye Lopez, sourced from TLC's VH1 Behind the Music special. All calculations are based on public information from the special combined with contractual research. All thoughts and opinions are solely those of the creator and not that of any third party, the group itself, or any creators involved with the albums contained herein. This breakdown is presented with the highest regard of respect for all creative forces who have produced this audible masterpiece of sound and to the group TLC for being the pinnacle of this creation. All deal points are average and generalized for ease of understanding and to protect the privacy of those involved. The thoughts in this video may produce questions from the uneducated viewer, but they are simply meant to enlighten you by way of overgeneralizing the facts for your own research purposes. Viewer discretion is advised. The year is 1994. All you need to know about the music business came out in 1991, the same year they signed with Pebitone Incorporated. Information wasn't readily available at any given time, and the internet via America Online had only 3 million active users by 1995. Google didn't exist until 1998. All information was passed down through the griots, the storytellers who gave the legends. We did not feel good about ourselves back at home because we didn't have anything to show for it. People <laughs> to this day still do not believe that we were broke, but we were, okay? <laughs> I know, so hard to believe. No one, everyone was wondering, how could you guys have a number one record? You sold all these albums and you don't have any money. This is how a group can sell 10 million records and be broke. And everyone, get ready to do your math. Okay, there are 100 points on the album. TLC had seven. Every point is equal to eight cents. All right, seven times eight, 56 cents. That means every time an album gets sold, TLC gets 56 cents. So 10 million records, $5.6 million. So the face record has to spend about $3 million. On, on the second album. So that automatically gets deducted from the $5.6 million before we can see a penny. Now, we have $2.6 million left to split between the three of us. Well, guess what? When you have that much money, you're in about the 47, 48.49% tax bracket. So that immediately gets deducted to $1.3 million. Then subtract the percentages paid to their managers, lawyers, and accountants. After generating millions of dollars in profits, TLC's attorney says Tian, Lisa, and Chili each took home about $50,000 a year in 1993 and 94. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. My name is Casey Graham. Hey, look, this episode needs no introduction. You've already seen the clips. You've already seen the, the intro. You've already seen the explanation. Look, welcome to the show. For those of you all who have never been to my channel before, I talk about music business on this channel, all right? We break down contracts. We break down ways to grow as an artist. We break down lots of different things, okay? Um, so if you clicked on this video and you've never been here before, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe after you get a few minutes in. I promise you, you will. And check out all the other videos on this channel because they should help you, okay? So before we get into things, we got to preface uh the end part of the clip okay it states that in 1993 and 1994 the group took home about fifty thousand dollars i just got to preface that that was for the first album the second album hadn't just yet started to generate revenue it only been on the market for i think 45 days it came out november 15th 1994 that's why i said that's why 1994 is in this this clip here all right, so now that, that gives some context to what the, the uh, narrator was saying in the actual show, 
we will jump into my infamous copyright explain for those of you all who are always on my channel this is a new copyright explain this is not the same one and it's dated for this time period i suggest you watch it so that you can kind of get your understanding going forward without further ado let's jump into copyright explain if you want to donate to the channel you can hit the links on the side and if you need to skip around the video to see things you need to see you can use the chapter uh click things skippy things below all right everybody let's go all right everybody copyright the sole right which an author has in their own original literary compositions okay the exclusive right of an author to print publish and vend their own literary works for their own benefit now before i hit the next button or go to the next slide. I do want to say that Left Eye did not write as much on Crazy Sexy Cool as she did on the first album. Neither did any of the group members. They mainly wrote on the interludes, okay? So those writer credits went to a lot of other writers, all right? Let's keep rolling here. So, uh, two main rights of copy. The music industry operates and revolves around, and revolves around two copyrights. The year is 1994. All right, our masters right here, sound recording copyright. Uh, sound recordings as in records, masters, phonograms, all right? That's what this P stands for right here. This, that's what it's for. This is the copyright symbol for the master, the phonogram, all right? Uh, and that didn't kick in until the 70s, all right? I think 72. Correct me if I'm wrong, copyright lawyer people, all right? Anyway, so, or the audio recording file, the WAV, the dot .bit file, because MP3s and bit, bit file was the predecessor to the MP3. So this was on the scene first. All right, AIFFs, those were around since the 80s, all right, of the composition and or song. Tune chord distro kit, nowhere in sight. Sound exchange, nowhere in sight, all right? But PPL was paying neighboring rights for the performance of the sound recording over in the UK, as well as a lot of other countries. This is the only one I talk about on my channel. But yes, this company pays for the performance of the sound recording copyright, wherever it is tracked over in the UK and other countries, all right? Now let's address publishing here. This is the C in the circle. This is equated to this when it comes to music, all right? And you got our lyric and melody on manuscript paper right here, and we got our MIDI file there just for explanation purposes, all right? So the performing arts copyright, performing arts as in the composition sheet, music, MIDI files, publishing, or song to be performed. BMI, CSAC, and ASCAP are performing rights organizations. They collect the performing rights or are excuse me the performing royalty for the performance of the composition i want to say that right anytime the song is performed they collect the royalty for you and they pay you the publisher this is not your publishing company they're not publishing companies your publishing company is your llc understand that now harry fox agency they were around since 1927 okay uh music reports right here uh they had just come on the scene in 1994. This Now you can see the fast moving wave of the music industry. They just hit the scene. Sound Exchange was right on the heels. All right. So now MCPS. MCPS collects mechanical royalties in the UK. And don't forget about PRS. They collect the performance royalties in the UK. Now let's explain lyric find and music match. The reason why they're here today is because you see these lyrics on your iPhone and in Google search and all that stuff. Back then it didn't exist. Exist. The lyrics were in the album covers. That's how the publishers got paid. They posted the lyrics in the album covers and sleeves and vinyl sleeves and all that stuff and on the back of the vinyl. So the publishers got paid for displaying the lyrics there. If I go to the next slide, you'll see what I'm saying. All right, so you get the right to reproduce. Six rights of copyright to be exercised to the fullest extent of the United States Code under Title 17. All right, that's the right to reproduce, the right to prepare derivative works, the right to distribute. All of this stuff right here, all this stuff right here was already kicking, alive and well. Cool, we good with that. But here's a change. The right to public performance, that's been there. The right to public display, that was the lyrics that I just talked about that goes on the back of the album or in the CD booklet or vinyl sleeve. All right, but this one, the right to digital performance, this law or this ruling or whatever you want to call it was introduced in 1993. It wasn't approved just yet. We're on the cusp of Napster, Kazaa, P2P sharing, digital download. We're, we're on the cusp of the very first huge shift in the music industry at this point. All right, so we're going to get into this in a minute. 
Okay, cool. So now that you have that, uh, we got to jump into left eyes math. Okay, so I'm going, even though she did it at the beginning, we're going to break it down. I'm going to address some questions that I have with it and some things I want to put on the table that would allow us to break this deal down. All right. And then from there, uh, we will just continue to roll the show out. This is a long show. Stick with me. That's why I got the chapter markers here. Look, you want to learn this music game? You want to really know how it works? Then I'd suggest you watch this video. This video is more than just TLC alone. This is for educating everyone on the industry, all right? And here's my next disclaimer. You got to understand, deals like this, though they may kind of still happen, they're not really written like this anymore because artists are now generating more leverage, more so now than ever. So the deals are all over the place. You got to understand, this deal is kind of antiquated for today's time period. All right, let's get into left eyes math. Left eyes math, all right? So let's let's jump into, like, let me preface this really quickly. And I know I said it earlier in the show, okay? But you gotta understand, 1993, 1994, that was a different time period before the album was, re was released, all right? So the girls, they had Ooh on the TLC tip that came out, uh, what was that, 91, two? I, I forgot the, the release date of that one. But they're now just now seeing the royalties from the first album in all of those single sales. Fifty thousand dollars a year in ninety three and ninety four. The album comes out in nineteen ninety four, November fifteenth, nineteen ninety four. Crazy sexy cool. Sorry, crazy sexy cool comes out. Okay, so the part that the announcer said, I just got to bring it up again, or the narrator said in the in the clip, does not equate to what happened on the second album. Now let's jump into it. Let's review these, these questions again. 100 points on an album. TLC has seven points. Every point is eight cents. Seven times eight cents equals 56 cents for one album sold for the group. 10 million records sold equals $5.6 million. Again, this has nothing to do with the singles that were being sold. The CD singles, the cassette singles, the vinyl singles. This has nothing to do with it. This is just albums. Three million in all, all in expenditures. OK, this is the recording, the marketing, the production budget, all of that. All right. I got a couple questions about this on the next slide. Two point six million left. Once you take the debt away, 50 percent in taxes, one point three million left split three ways. Four hundred thirty three dollars, four hundred thirty three thousand dollars, three hundred and four hundred thirty three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cents. There's a lot of threes. But, you know, that's what happens when you split stuff in the thirds. Now, here are the questions. 100 points on the album. Yes, we get that. TLC has seven points. The question is, why does the group only have seven points? Now, a lot, a hundred, hundreds of thousands of people can answer this question. Not many understand it, but a hundred, hundreds of thousands of people knows why they only had seven points. OK, because if you're in this game, you know how that works. Every point equals eight cents. Why is the amount payable on an album sold eight dollars? We're going to get to that one. Seven points times eight cents equals 56 cents for one album sold for the group. Okay. Cool. 10 million records sold. Again, not singles, not single cassettes, none of that. $5.6 million. Question is, how could the label generate $80 million in revenue at $8 a unit and the group only have $5.6 million? It, you know, you get what I'm saying? Like this, we're going to break it down. You're going to see, we're going to break it down. All right. Uh, take away 3 million all in expenditures. How much of the artist royalty was advanced? That's a question. How much was spent on marketing, touring assistance, discretionary funds, additional funds, whatever you get. It, it, and if that was the case, if 3 million was in all in and the advance went into all in all ugh, and the vans went into all of that. Was it really three million in expenditures or was that just what the expenses from the label was uh, that this advance is throwing me? Because if the advance was not included in that, then the numbers that I'm going to present will be way off. But we don't know that. So I'm only going on the information she gave us. All right. I didn't do much more research than that because I only wanted to keep things to where the public knowledge was that they could kind of research on their own. All right. Two point six million dollars left. Cool. All right. 50 percent in taxes. I got to address this because we're going to get on taxes too. 1995 federal taxes, because you got to remember when a record comes out, you don't start seeing the record royalties until six to nine months later. So they would have made money 
from what was released in 94, starting around the, the fall of 96. Okay, so now we have 39.6% as a federal tax bracket at that point. Like that, that's that was the top tax bracket. But I'm going to break down brackets and buckets and how they work. The Georgia state tax was 4%. And that is only pertaining to them if their companies that will be receiving this cash was based in this state. All right. I'm just giving an example because most states were around the same. All right. There's one point three million dollars left and it's split three ways. Four hundred thirty three thousand three hundred thirty three dollars and thirty three cents. All right. These are my questions I'm putting on the table and some explanations I'm going to be putting on the table here. Now, let's get down to it. Why is the amount payable on an album sold $8? All right. If points equal 1% of sales revenue each, the reason why every point equals eight cents is because the label is only paying royalties to the artist via the PPD or purchase price to dealers, which is the wholesale price of $8 or 66.67% from the total retail price of $11.99, which adds on the additional 33 and third percent. That's how it works. You know this. Because when you look at your producer contract, your royalty is going to be based on this. So contracts tell you exactly what's happening. All right. So you, you just have to learn how to read these things. Now, the 33 percent contains the amount the pressing and distribution department or label makes, as well as a small cut for retailers. All right. Or from what normally happens after the retailer capital gets the product, they capitalize on the price. Driving it, driving it from at that time, thirteen ninety nine to eighteen ninety nine. Okay, so because y'all remember back in the day, CDs were expensive, so it had to be the product had to be good, good. Otherwise, you weren't wasting thirteen, fourteen dollars, you know, fourteen to twenty bucks on a CD that was crap. Okay, so that's that. Let's keep rolling. Now we got to break the song, the album down. Because this is this cap situation, I'm going to explain it, will let us understand the points. All right, let's go in. So, Crazy Sexy Cool album breakdown. 11 song cap deal is in effect here. All right, you got 10 original songs. And you got one cover right here, If I Was Your Girlfriend. That was a Prince song right there. And you got five interludes. These interludes are just a flat fee. They will pay for those and they won't generate much of anything. All right, just depending on what you negotiate. But... These don't classify as songs, okay? Depending on your deal. I'm just going to say, overall, depending on your deal, these really don't classify as songs. These are just a flat fee that will be paid out here. Now, let's keep going. All right. Now, what is a song cap? All right. A song cap caps the number of songs that, that an album contains and the label will allow the artist to release. It prevents the label's profits from reduction by way of the mandatory encroaching U.S. government mechanical royalties fees. Now, some of you all, back then you weren't really fighting on a reduced mechanical yet. It The argument was starting to come in as the, you know, dollar started to inflate itself and the, the value of it started to go down and the mechanical royalty went up, you know, you get where that can go. Okay. So why does this even matter in the first place? Well, anytime an artist goes over the song limit, the artist is responsible for the excess producer royalties and mechanical royalties that will be paid out. So that's how I know that there was an 11 song cap in effect here because number one, I looked at the album. That's not hard to do. And number two, number two left. eye said they had seven points. If they would have went over, they would have been one point less would have really drove them in the negative. You don't want to do that. All right. You still want to profit. You still want to pay your debt back. You still want to eat. So you're going to stay at 11 songs. Okay. Now, we're going to get into the artist royalty in a second. Okay, so we're about to jump into the artist royalty portion of this thing. But, hey, I figured it was a great time for me to slang some books in here. So download all my books and free guides below. All right, you can book a call with me, 470-291-5767. Uh, you can text me here or you can go to the website, uh, musicmoneymakeover.com slash book a call. That's really the best way to do it. Click on the link, book the call. From there, we can we can chat it up on Zoom. All right. Um, also, this is a good time to mention for producers. All right. Before we get into this artist royalty, because the producer royalty is coming with this, 
the producer's contract, music production contract course is on my website. You want to know actually how this stuff works in tandem with your production contract. I suggest you get that course because I'm really break. You think I'm breaking stuff down in this video It is only on the surface of what I'm doing in that video. I'm giving you so much game in the music production contract course, learning how to charge for your beats and run the formulas and all the numbers and all that stuff. Go grab that course, go grab the contract so that you can take it to your attorney and kind of fine tune it for your tailor fit needs. All right. Um, and I suggest that producers highly go and grab that course. Label owners, I suggest you do the same thing too. Without further ado, let's get into the artist royalty portion of the show. All right, ladies and gentlemen, artist royalty. Let's dig in. This is the meat of the show today. All right, let's do it. Whew, what is it? Artist royalty. A royalty is simply a percentage of the sales price of a good or service due to the respective payee. That's all it is. All right. And if you know that, you know, these royalties are like the bigger definition of what the point is. The point is a royalty. OK. It just so happens that this point on this album is worth eight cents. All right. One percent is worth eight cents. All right. A hundred points. This is what we're starting with. OK. No harm, no foul. We get it. Yes. A hundred points. Let's dig in. All right, we're going to add in TLC's points, seven points. We're, we're still looking good. No harm, no foul here, seven points. But we got to work this thing backwards, so let's go. Why does the group only have seven points? Left Eye explains that the group had seven points, but if TLC only had a measly seven points to begin with, then the deal would have run a negative before they pressed record on that beautiful 48-track SSL console Left Eye had in the back at the crib, all right, causing an inter, uh, indentured servitude situation. And, of course, I got to explain this later, okay? Uh, I kind of hinted on it earlier. But if they had just one point less, it would have been dangerous, okay? So let's keep rolling. Producer royalty. Now. Adding in the producer royalty. All producers are at the top of their game. You got to understand this thing. We got Dallas Austin, Jermaine Dupree, Babyface, Organized Noise, Puff Daddy, his name at the time. All right. And producers royalties are 4% of the album sales. These 5% producers don't start kicking in until like about 1998. All right. So and if somebody had 5% on this album, then and I look. Like I said, this is overgeneralized. That's why I gave the disclaimer. OK, so this is what it is. OK, cool. The producer has to get their royalty. We haven't gotten into the juicy part of this thing yet. So let's keep rolling. And we got to explain this producer royalty. Now, producer points explain the total amount paid out to the producers based on left eyes math formula equals 32 cents to be split between all producers involved. Why? How does the label know? Who gets what? Well, it's important to remember our song caps. That's why the label capped the album in the first place. I'm not faulting the label for this. I do the same thing, too. You have to. OK, now take 32 cents and divide it by 11. All right. And that equals 0 0.029 cents paid per song points on the sale. Let's explain the, the tier producers here. Now, if you a 2 percent producer. You, you just, you getting your feet wet. You got to keep trying, man. All right. Got to keep hustling. Got to keep getting your name out there. If you're a 3% at this time, if you're a 3% producer, then you're trusted to deliver. Great. If you're a 4% producer, you're a super producer in 1994. Like I said, those 5% producers, the Timberlands and the Pharrells, they're right on the heels and they're getting ready to inject that 5% like nobody's business. So Just Blaze, Pharrell, Timberland. That 5% is coming down the track and it's rolling. It's chugging away, but it's not here just yet. I mean, you might have Teddy Riley doing it at this point, but, you know, 4%, that's what it is. All right. Now, mechanical royalties. Here we go. Here we go. You got to understand 9.1 cents don't even exist yet. A lot of you know 9.1 cents. We ain't even here yet. We're in 1992. 1993, 4, 5, that's where we are. The album was, 
the Crazy Sexy Cool was released November 15th, 1994. I'm sorry, I still don't have the release date for this. I can't think of it off the top of my head because this is where we are in question. But this album had mechanical rates at 6.25%, and I'm pretty sure in the contract there was a clause written in there so that the mechanical rate would not exceed what it came out under, the, 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 the tier it came out under. This one came out when it was 6.6 .6 cents. That's when this one came out right here. That's why we got to, that's how I know. You just got to do just a little bit of light research and you can find your way back to the center. I didn't even have to dig that hard for this stuff. I didn't. All right. Um, so it's important to note that the mechanical royalty is int, is not based on the points model. It is simply a flat rate. It is not. So, so when we talk about points, I got to go back. Here we go. We got to go back just a little bit. When we talk about points, I can't put in 6.6 .6 points. That is not what that six. That's not. So I'm, I got the math. Don't worry. I got you on the math. Let's go in. I got you on the math. It's, it's, it's a flat rate. Okay. Per that song. Let's go in. Now we got to come back to the cap. Again, what is a cap? A song cap caps the number on the album. I mean, the uh, the album on the number of songs that the label will allow the artist to release. And it prevents the label's profits from reduction by way of the mandatory encroaching U.S. government mechanical royalties fees. All right. Again, why does this matter? Anytime an artist goes over the song limit. The artist is responsible for the excess producer royalties and mechanical royalties that will be paid out. Now, some artists will say, oh, man, yeah, that's cool. What about pay for it? But what you don't understand is if you read the fine print, if the artist goes over the song cap limit, it will eat into their artist royalty. Remember when I said that earlier? It do, you, you can't just pay it out your pocket. It's going to come out of your artist royalty. All right, let's keep rolling. Now. Now, I think you all might remember this from a video that I put up two weeks ago, but I'll, I'll jump into that in a minute. This is what's happening here. In the deal, Left Eye says she has seven points or, or TLC has seven points. But in the contract, right, the contract says that the artist will be responsible for this, at least most new contracts now. OK. On the average, we'll say that the artist is responsible for the producer royalty and the mechanical. That lets me know that when Left Eye said they had seven points, the, they, she was speaking on their final re reduced amount. Their final reduced amount bottomed out at seven points. So what does this tell me? What does this tell me at this point that I talk about on this channel? Okay, we're going to get, hold, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Why is the mechanical royalty set at 9% for the album? You might say, well, Casey, it's not 9.1 cents yet. We're not even there. You just, just told me. But look, the 1994 mechanical royalty rate is at 0 0.066 or 6.6 .6 cents. One point equals eight cents. The mechanical royalty rate for one song equals 82.5% of a point. All right? So for the album, let's just do the math. For the entire album for 11 songs, that equals 72 cents, okay, or 72.6 cents. All right, divide that by one point or eight cents, and you get 9.075% in point value. Now I throw the 9% here. Casey, where are you going with this, man? Like you got all this math. I don't understand. What's happening? Like what, what are you trying to say? Like I get it. <sighs> Check it out. TLC actually had an 80-20 deal. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Don't I always talk about 80-20 deals on this channel? Before they pressed the record button, they had an 80-20 deal. Because if it is the case that the artist must be responsible for this, all right, then, of course, with just standard math, no hardcore research, on average, you will see that if the artist is responsible for these two royalties, then they bottomed out at seven. They had an 80 20 deal. These 80 20 deals ain't going nowhere. Straight up. All right. 
artist royalty, 7%, 56 cents for an album, all right? Producer royalty, 4%, uh, 4% 32 cents for an album. Mechanical royalty, 9%, all right? 70, uh, 72 cents for an album. If you took these two and you subtracted it, subtracted it from the 7%, right here, the 56 cents that that equaled, you would run in a negative. They didn't run in the negative because if they did, they wouldn't have profited anything and that wouldn't have made sense. They would have been under indentured servitude. That's not what happened. So that lets me know that they had an 80-20 deal because they had to make profit somewhere. All right, and just for, for giggles right here, actual artist earnings per song was, you know, one nickel per song. All right. So possible points missing from the deal, executive producer, two points, engineer, one point, manager, one point, uh, vocal producer. I didn't throw that on here. Vocal producer, one point, production company, somewhere between one and 10 points. Right. Possibly this is what they possibly could have been paying Pepitone back with or it could have been straight cash or a percentage of their earnings, whatever. I don't know. But these are just possible missing points that uh, she didn't actually put in. Again, I'm only using public knowledge. I'm not using deep deep research here it doesn't take a rocket scientist to just write down these math questions and if you know a little bit of contractual knowledge you can figure it out all right now we'll get to this in a minute hey now so we got to jump into paying this stuff back how are we going to pay all this stuff back you know after we've talked about the royalties that will be paid out well we got to pay this stuff back how are we going to do that you know um this is a very important section for artists to understand it's also very important for producers that, you know, because it's going to supplement your knowledge on how you know your producer royalty is supposed to be paid back. All right. Now, um, take this stuff serious, you all. Like, I really put time into breaking this stuff down and it's not a joke. You know what I mean? So uh, utilize all the information in here. Please like, comment and share. All right. Here we go. All right, everybody. The big payback. We're almost through this thing. We're almost through it. So just bear with me here. The big payback. All right. Now, every sale pays back the amount loaned at 56 cents per unit sold. If the amount loan was really three million dollars, in my opinion, I think it was more then it would take TLC to sell a whopping five point three million albums or five million three hundred fifty seven thousand one hundred forty three albums to make the money back, generating forty two million eight hundred fifty seven thousand one hundred forty four dollars in revenue for the label because all loan money is paid back from the artist royalty. So that's 14 times the original amount loan. This, everybody always likes to use the slogan that record deals are bank loans. They are not bank loans at all. Record deals are not bank loans. You don't get a record deal and just walk in and say, hey, man, you know, I borrowed $3 million, but, you know, I made it back in one year on the road. Here's your $3 million. It don't work that way. It doesn't work that way. Here's the key phrase. All loan money is paid back from the artist royalty. So in other words, here's what I'm saying. If I loaned you one dollar and told you pay me back fourteen dollars, would you take that deal in exchange for getting your voice and creativity broadcasted to the world at massive scale? I'm going to give you one dollar. Hey, man, I'm going to give you one dollar, baby. But give me back 14 on the back end. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense to you? It don't make sense to me. Like I, I couldn't I couldn't do that. Hey, man, I'm going to be one dollar to work with and you're going to go out here and you're going to make just a massive. I, I'm going to give you everything you want, but you just got to bring me back fourteen dollars. Can't do it. I can't do that. All right. So. That's a bit high. Like I said, it's not a bank loan at all. Bank loan, you go in, you get some money, you got an interest rate. I, I didn't even do the interest. I didn't even want to get into that ugly number on what an interest rate would look like on that on this type of loan right here. All right. This is this is ridiculous. So, yeah, I got to go back here. Didn't I not you know, say for those who uh, who watch the YouTube channel, didn't I not say this in these two videos again, man? I told you, I told you that I said the artist has to pay back the money from their artist royalty. The only way you can do that is if you possibly negotiate that. One person I've, I know of, I'm quite sure there's others 
that if you get deep into your deal, you can walk in and say, hey, man, cut me loose. I'm just going to write you the check. It just depends on who's running the label at that time to say what you can and can't do. Ryan Leslie. Ryan Leslie is the only person that I know of that walked in. I think he dropped like $140,000 to just X the contract and close out the debt with a check. Other than that, and but that's because he wasn't in that much of debt. Well, I think it was 146000 or $1.4 million, one of the two. Either way, he was good for it. He wrote the check and just was like, hey, man, I'm out. Peace. And they were like, cool, man. But the regular like, hey, you weren't making money for us anyway, so just give us the rest of the money back. That's more than we're going to take us forever to get your money back anyway. So holla at you later. Peace. You know what I mean? So when you got to pay back that little bit, it doesn't. Nobody's really caring about it. All right. Go get you out. Go back and watch these calculations. I told you the same thing. I told you the same thing. Anyway, that's why Tiffany Red is so important. That's why I did this video. And some people think I'm playing about this. Like, this is serious. Because everybody's so quick to say, oh, why don't you just stay independent and build it up? Yeah, it does take a lot of work. It does take a lot of work. The problem is when you need the loan to keep your business thriving, when you don't have enough independent expertise around to keep your business growing, because mind you, venture capitalists, VCs, all these people, they don't know how the record industry works. They, yeah, they want to be involved, but they don't know how the mechanics works. And I love for venture capitalists and VCs to give loans to, to artists so that they can pay them back. But they got to understand how the money's going to flow back to them. That's the problem. So if the VCs don't know, why would you go and get a VC to loan you money? And then now they're on your neck expecting a return based on their mentality of how the money should be paid back, right? Or why would you go get a private investor if they don't know? So that means you have to have your business together that much more to take private money. It can be done. It can be done, but this is why the dope boys and the trappers and all this stuff, yeah, man, I put this money in, I'm going to flip it. No, you're not. Sit down. You're not about to flip the money that quick. It don't work like that. That's I see a lot of dope boys come in the game they put the money in, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, whatever they drop in to get started. And then what happens is the money gets lost. Oh, man, we about to shoot this video. We're going to put it on Worldstar. And they see that check come in. It's like $1,000. They're like, what is this? And then they're out of the game. Because they don't know how the money flows in this thing. All right? Tiffany Red and the 100 percenters is very important. I implore you all to go back and watch this video. Because the calculations in this video is the same here as it is the same here as it is the same right here. The same thing, the same 80-20 deal every time, every single time. It don't miss a beat. Every time. This is what the 100 percenters were proposed. This ain't, and I'm this is not a spot for the 100 percenters. I'm just saying I agree with what she's doing. So this is what it is. This is what she's proposing. Now, the debt responsibility, this, this, this cuts back. But if you notice right here, the songwriter has, she gave the songwriter 4%. And then the producer right here, 4%. So, but this originally did not exist in the deal. That was all encompassed here. What she did was she moved these two royalties out and gave the songwriter a royalty where they never had one, period. Label takes 72%. Artist takes 11%. Now the artist can now eat. The artist can sit down at the table and have a meal and get a house and pay back the debt faster. This allows for a faster payback. Now, here's mine. This is what I suggest. You're an artist with no buzz. The first offer that comes across the table to you that I feel like is a fair offer that I will allow you to pay back the debt at five times the dollar instead of 14 times the dollar. Reason why you got to do five times the dollar is because, number one, if you even if you have a, a label, they got to pay for all the services that the label needs to run, all the videos, all this other stuff. They got to make money back because they still you got to understand they still have to keep pumping money into you to get you to what is called public consciousness. Right. Because. Just paying the money back is cool, 
But if you pay the money back and nobody knows you, what's the point? So this is what I'm saying. Five times a dollar, I feel, is good enough for an artist with no buzz. But, you know, with a little bit of buzz, like you just had a couple viral TikTok joints, not like a million going viral on TikTok, like 500,000, something like that. Or maybe you had one viral video. Like what's the what's the what's the what's the what's the guy? Um, uh, the June bug guy. Right. That's not sustainable. You can't sustain that. But if they wanted to do a deal, I say, you know, hey, man, make five times my dollar back. Here's, you got some buzz, but you ain't got no leverage because you can't you, you, you still you still out here doing the June bug. You know what I mean? So that's this is what that's for. And this is a totally fair deal. I feel. All right. Hey, now, before we go on, I got to throw this infamous Troy Carter clip. If you don't know, Troy Carter is the former manager of Lady Gaga. He also owned stock in Tesla. And he was, I believe, I just want to get my facts straight, creative director of Spotify. He owns Q&A, all right, which is a record label designed to create a liaison between majors and the streaming services to allow better deals for artists. You got to listen to this Earn Your Leisure clip with Troy Carter talking about the deal structures of the major labels and how it causes friction with the money flow. All right, check it out. How, how much resistance did you face from artists? I know I hear a lot of times when they, they talk about the percentages that they get off of a stream. In the early stages, you know, I could imagine they're looking at my money stream has now changed. What kind of resistance did you meet? So so no no exaggeration, my, my, my first week at Spotify, um, I, I, I went to do a presentation. I told the team to pull together some, some, some numbers. And, um, and our first meeting, we, we, we were doing a meeting with Maverick Entertainment, which is like Sal, uh, who manages The Weeknd in French Montana, and G. Roberson, who manages everybody in the world. Yeah, and, yeah everyone. Um, he, <laughs> So like it's, a, it's their whole staff meeting, Guy Osiri who manages Madonna, U2, all of them. So I go to their staff meeting and I, and I pull up um, a presentation to show them how much Spotify paid out to all of their artists on streaming that year for the last X amount of years and then how much they're gonna make over the next five years as well and everybody's jaws dropped because they're like, where's that money? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, cause you can't blame, cause I wanted to, I want, and, I, and I did this presentation for a, a ton of different managers, but what I was showing them was, we pay out a lot of money, hundreds of millions of dollars, billions of dollars. Like one artist on the platform, it was one year this artist grossed. I don't know what the artist got, but the artist, the, but I know we paid out close to a hundred million dollars. So I'm like, so, and that's not that's not Apple Music. That's not all the streaming combined. That's, that's just Spotify. Us. So any any sort of gripes has the gripe should be with the record labels and the deal structures that the record labels have with 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 the with the artists versus what spotify paid out to artists and so that was part of the education process and that's how we ended up getting a lot of artists onto the platform because they started seeing the importance of it and then also we shared a lot of data i'm showing you how to reach your fans we're showing you where where, where your fans are how they engage how they engage engage with your music and then for the older legacy artists you know part of the conversation was I showed a lot of the artists because Beatles wouldn't put their music on the platform at one point. And mm -hmm. what we did once we got the Beatles onto the platform, we showed them um, and you know, in, in their in the estates, I think it was 85% of or some big percentage of people who were streaming the Beatles were under the age of 30. So these are people who weren't born. So you got new fans now. So if you're a legacy act. And, and you, you're thinking about generations and you're thinking about how, how do you leave your legacy? You, you have to be on streaming if you want to reach younger consumers. So that was sort of, you know, just the education process we helped put together. Oh, I uh, almost forgot the taxes. So, uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and jump into that. Now, taxes 
should be classified into buckets, not brackets. Anybody that does taxes, correct me if I'm wrong, but based on my knowledge, this is how it goes. The buckets get filled up and then taxed. Federally, it goes like this. $2.6 million for three group members. We're going to just break it up three ways, pre-tax. $866,666.66. Come on with the 666, people. Go ahead and drop it in the comments because I know you're ready to, so just go ahead and do it. Whatever. Let's keep rolling. Fill up bucket number one. 23,999. Come on, 669933. People, go ahead and drop your comments because I know you're ready to. You got that. You got your finger right there on the return button. You ready? You're so ready to fire it up. All right. $23,999.99. Tax it at 15%. All right. $3,599.99 in the first bracket. The next bracket, remember, this is the 1995 bracket that I'm using, all right? So now fill up bucket number two with $34,150, tax it at 28%, $9,562 gets taxed out of that. Fill up bucket number three with $63,150 and tax it at 31%, that's $19,576.50, all right? Bucket number four, fill it up with $142,450, tax it at 39.6%, and that's $56,410 and 20 cents the rest put it in bucket number five and we're still going to tax it at 39.6 percent that equals 238 dollars and seven seven two hundred thirty eight thousand seven hundred fifty five dollars so if the amount earned was eight hundred sixty six thousand dollars and sixty uh eight hundred sixty six thousand six hundred sixty six dollars and sixty six cents we taxed it and the taxation amount was three hundred twenty seven thousand nine hundred three dollars and sixty nine cents then the profit from what this was, was $538,762.97. But we also have to run the same number on the state side. So if I'm wrong, CPAs, let me know. I'm just saying we overgeneralizing here. Okay. All right. So $34,666.66 at 4% rate. So that means that this minus that $34,000. All right. Um, would be because I'm just taking it. I, remember, I tax this. That's the tax number. I'm just taking the profit and just deducting. They they walk in at this point. They're walking away with half a million. Okay, we're not done. But I'm just saying. So now this is our final profit post tax. Average tax rate when we averaged out all of these and together was 58 percent tax. That's pretty hot. So as an artist, what you have to learn how to do is figure out. The money, right? This three hundred, um, this is almost three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You got to figure out what to get three hundred and fifty thousand dollars in write-offs. So that means cameras, uh, SUV trucks. Get you your six thousand pound courtesy of George W. Bush the second. Get you your six thousand pound Tahoe, right? Write that forty-eight thousand dollars off on the taxes. Buy some cameras, computers, recording equipment. You know what I mean? Uh, get you a Sprinter van, write that off. You, you got to figure out how to buy stuff to help you go forward in your business and write it off in order to keep yourself moving forward. If you pay the IRS in this, then you're not doing business smart, okay? And that's just basic write-offs. That ain't even, that's not nothing. Ex come on, man. That's just basic writing this off. All right, let's keep rolling. Now, and the other stuff too. All right, who forgot about this. <clears throat> now, do not pay your attorney pre-tax. Don't ever do that. All right. So the manager percentage is 20, 20 percent. So they're getting 20 percent of the earnings. Don't ever pay your manager, uh, you know, uh, pre-tax. Unless they're going to unless you're going to write them off in the tax like they're managing your affairs. So you write that off in the tax. OK, then that can cut into this that you would have been owed. And so you could have saved some money based off how much you paid your manager anyway. I'm just doing this post tax for my example. Hundred thousand dollars went out to the manager, lawyer retainer on average four k a month. Possible five percent closing fees on each deal they closed. Uh, Forty eight thousand dollars goes out the door. Accountant retainer two two and a half k a month doesn't include auditing fees. This is a good accountant. This is not some fly by night CPA. This is a good accountant that's really really making it pop for you. Um, and they, it could be accountant slash business manager together that would do this. All right. Uh, $30,000 out the door. 
Here we are, $325,277.05, Jesus freaking Christ, debt owed to Pepitone Incorporated, amongst others, oh my God, security and artist upkeep, and on and on and on at this point. Remember, the year is 1994. All you need to know about the music business came out in 1991, the same year they signed with Pebatone Incorporated. Information wasn't readily available yet, and the Internet via America Online had only 3 million active users by 1995, and Google didn't exist until 1998. All information was passed down through the griots, the storytellers who gave the legends. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and I will exit out of the computer. All right, so now that you all have seen the entire show, thank you for watching if you made it all the way to the end. If you made it all the way to the end, all right, tell me you made it all the way to the end in the comment section and then text me that you made it all the way to the end uh, at the number here, well, when it pops back up, 470-291-5767. I really love to just, you know, you know, uh, just tell me what you thought about the show. Just, just you know, converse with me on that, all right? Uh, also, you know, as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please share to all of your friends in the music game because that's what this channel is about. It's kind of a not a, not really an open forum, but it's it's really about helping people understand the music business. Actually, like we're not like I want to see the music business grow, and in order for it to grow, we got to be transparent about a lot of things. All right, some people might not like the things that I say in my video, but others do. Um, at the same time, if everybody can be a little bit more transparent, people can grow. There will be new problems arise you know, on the horizon by creating a transparent environment, but we, we can cross that bridge when we get there, man. I mean, really, like if, if we want to pull, if people like Spotify and all these places want to pull in more revenue, you've got to be more transparent. And that's the beautiful thing about the Troy Carter clip. Spotify is at least trying to be transparent about how that model works. And if the hangup is in the middle with the structure of the deal, that has to be fixed so the environment can be better for everybody. And that's the whole purpose of this video. This video is not to tear anybody down to make anybody feel ashamed of where they are or where they could be, all right? We're only trying to make a better environment. People like myself, people like Tiffany Red, people who are out here doing it, you know? I know you all watch a lot of other people, Damian Keys, Adam Ivy, Dorian82. I know you all watch all these other people. So we're trying to make a better music industry environment because regardless of what you think about these contracts and how they work, the it works in this industry to top down. And if the contracts are at the top, there's a lot of people who are going through the threshold at the top. And these contracts have to kind of match up and get a, have a ballpark figure. There's only a few people who will go rogue and do their own contracts, but most people will stay around the same thing. So we got to change this narrative to make a better environment for everybody that's the whole purpose of this video. I hope that people who are involved with this project, you know, it seats well with you all. Um, you know, and I hope that I haven't, you know, uh, um, um, tarnished any characters or whatever you call those things. Or, you know what I'm saying? Um, because look, I'm only trying to make things a better environment for everybody. I'm, I'm tired of beating this dead horse. Uh, like, comment, and subscribe. Text me 470-291-5767 and I'm out. Peace. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the show. Log on to musicmoneymakeover.com forward slash shop to download all my books and free guides. And while you're there, click on the book a call tab to get a one-on-one -on -one Zoom call with me to get all your music business questions answered and solved. Thanks for watching.